this device is a digital cassette drive for the Hewlett Packard line of calculators and portable computers. It runs on the HP IL, that stands for Interface Loop. And you may have seen in the introductory video where I introduced the HP 75C here, you may have seen this in the background. It is model number 82161A and it runs off mains power as well as battery. So there's the mains power there, same as what the HP 75 runs on, except the battery is different. This is the Top Cat style battery. It's four rechargeable NICADs and 1.2 volts each and that uh, just fits straight into the bottom of the unit there like so I've actually repacked the battery pack here I may do a video on that at some stage but uh, effectively I split the case here and solder in these tabbed uh, sub -C batteries to make a new pack so the cover just fits on like so locking tabs there ready to go plug in the interface loop here now it's second in line after the printer and before the video interface we'll plug in the power here okay so cassette here, mini data cassette, quite a cute little uh, cassette really, I, you know it's quite a bit smaller than a compact cassette, so we've got the insertion arrows here, this face up, it's one sided, you can't, as far as I know you can't uh, put it in upside down, this little container here, this little flap that can store two tapes there, in case you're out on the road, uh, open button here and then just insert the cassette into the door there and there we go ready for operating. Now when you turn the machine on it just automatically positions to the start of the tape. The setup I've got here is the computer itself uh, with the interface loop heads out to the tape drive here so we'll turn that on as well. So when you're setting up the interface loop uh, you should have the, all the devices turned on and under here which I'm using as a, as a bit of a prop for the to prop the computer up onto and make the angle a bit better is the video interface unit that's powered on at the moment. There's no battery pack for that. So we're directly running that off AC. I've set up the TV screen here and first thing to do is to turn any IL device on, any device in the loop. So that's the printer, the video interface is already on and cassette on. Now prior to turning off last time I used the computer I issued a command called off IO and what that does is it saves the assignments that I created where I assigned P the label P for the printer and CA for the cassette drive TV for the video interface so they're fairly arbitrary labels, if I wanted to I could have called this TA, you know, short for tape, instead of CA, short for cassette. Uh, it retains those labels as such, even if these have been turned off, disconnected or both. And to restore those, we turn the computer on with the ATTN button there, and issue command restore. IO and you can see nothing's printing 
here because the IO has been turned off as such. But if I do restore IO, return, now the, if I go list IO, we can see here now that it's printing to the TV because it also saved the display is uh, command so display is TV so it will display on both TV and the computer screen here uh, so restore IO also restores that so that you can see we've got the three devices there right now if I want to catalog what's on the cassette here we do a cat space quote colon then the label name CA in this instance close quote So as far as I know that was the latest file that I used on the tape. Now to scroll down the list, we use the cursor key on the keyboard here, Lander. So these will be in chronological order, the top being the latest file to be used, down to the last or the earliest file to be used. Now if I uh, want to copy a file from the drive here to the computer, I first of all will just check that the name, so if I cat all, that will catalog all files in memory on this computer here. Same thing, a down arrow. So you see we've got a, a lander program in memory here, also a lander program on tape. I'm looking for a name that's not already in here. Although what I could do, if I wanted to copy test into memory, well then I could give test a different name. In fact, let's do that. If I ran a command to copy from here to here with the same names, this file will overwrite the one in memory. So I'll give it a different name. So the command is copy, space quote, file name, let's do test, colon, CA, which is a label for the cassette drive, close quote, to, and we'll give, we'll give a name, test1. So it's going to co copy test program to memory and call it test1. So if I cat all again, we should see a file there, test1, yep, there it is there. What is interesting is that length here is 47 bytes now, whereas before uh, on the tape, the test program, I'm sure was 256. Yeah, test program was 256 bytes. Now I think the reason for that is because the test program will take up a minimum of 256 bytes when it's on tape and then when you put it out into memory it'll uh, only consume as many bytes as there are in the program itself. If I want to copy the test1 program back onto the tape and retain the name, we do copy test1 space 2 quote Hold on, CA, close quote, return, and that should just copy the test one straight back to the tape. should see a file called test1. There it is there. And again it's back out to 256. So I think it's saving in blocks of 256 bytes.
you can see that one there is 512, it takes up more than 256 bytes, but less than or equal to 512 for that file there. If you want to change the name of the file that's in memory when it's stored to tape, say you wanted to name it test2, give it the name colon CA and that'll copy that back. You'll notice here that I've got a program here called Rubix and it's a text file so that is text only and the B's are basic files. So you can create and edit text files and store them on the machine. Print them out to the printer if you want to. Catalog that. I should have a test two. Test two. There we go. Got date and time obviously over here. Length. You can also store data files on tape as well. So it's quite handy for you know it's mass storage. And then you know if you fill the memory of your computer up, you can uh, offload onto the cassette tape. You can have more than one tape drive in the loop. So you could have this as maybe your primary storage and then you might have another tape drive that you could hook up for uh, as a backup I guess. To purge a file, you so let's say we want to purge test 2 from tape. Command is fairly straightforward, purge as you'd expect, test 2 colon CA, like that. So it's purging file name test2 from the cassette. Yeah, there's just a, a quick look at the HP digital cassette drive. I hope you enjoyed that and thank you very much for watching.